game is really hard work. You might not get a day off in weeks. When I knew that I needed to build a bulletproof buggy, I knew that I had to call in the experts, Al and Andrew. Al, you got any ideas? Yeah, I got some ideas, I might. Ah! <laughs> ah, my cheeks are <laughs> That's about a 14 metre difference. Lock her on. No. Oh, look at that. If you're as good as that in the kitchen, you are marriage material. <laughs> Get back oh, to no. work. <laughs> With all the work that Terrain Tame is doing, I'm really hoping that this buggy will be as strong as it possibly can. Okay, so we've done uh, parabolics on the towing vehicle. And uh, tell me why we need uh, some suspension on this, because we're all ready to go with some decent heavy duty stuff. Yeah, it definitely needs good suspension. Uh, the sort of country I drive in, and you can't slow down. When cattle are running off across the paddock, and you know you're not going to see them for 10 years, you can't just <laughs> creep across the creek, you just floor it. So the suspension gets an absolute beating, and you know, I've had broken leaf springs and all sorts before. So it's not just your driving. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is, I don't know. <laughs> the BJ is running leaf springs front and rear, and we're going to swap them out with heavy duty leaf springs. The focus on the bull buggy is not so much about ride quality, it's about lasting the distance. The wrong side, bloody socket, that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, so it's just ground itself onto it. Correct. Last time I listened to my elders, I, I, I work different than some of the guys, but that's understandable. Is that Uncle Al's way of saying that even he can get it wrong sometimes? On this uh, bull bagger that we're preparing, I would think uh, suspension has got to be number one. And when you look around here and see what they're going to go over, and I said, you're not going to go along there. He said, yeah, we just go straight over the top of it. It's got to be suspension. That would be the thing that fails. Jess has come a long way since we uh, since we first crossed paths. Uh, now she's a, she's a smart woman and a fast learner, so yeah, I'll be keen to learn something off her this time. I haven't done any mustering before. For all bearings and bushes on this vehicle, we're using a good quality extreme pressure grease. Yes, you know, I noticed you undid the swing and shackle first, which is the right thing to do, and then fix shackle last. And when you put them back together, fix shackle first, swing and shackle later. Why is that? The reason is that if you undid, if I was to undo the fix shackle now, the whole diff and everything will swing on that swing and shackle, yeah. a blue and use. And if you put the swing and shackle on first, then you've got to lever the whole diff back to get try and fit that. So it's easy to fit the single pin because this swing and shackle swings anywhere you like. Okay. Much easier. Yeah, makes sense. For something so simple, the U-bolts are a critical component as they join the diff to the springs and help propel the vehicle forward. They take an incredible amount of force and shock loading. Every time you drive over a bump, the force is essentially trying to stretch the U-bolts. We're going to put a new set of heavy-duty springs in. These are our heavy-duty elastomer bushes. And we're going to install these in your new springs. So, the first thing you'll notice is that you have a lip on the outside, and that is to help retain the grease. And it's also got this beautiful cross hatching pattern on the inside as well, so they're there for the same reason. So it allows the grease to be held in the right place inside the, against the pin. One other thing to point out is these bullet grooves in the outside of the, uh, the bush. So basically they just allow for a little bit of inaccuracy in sizing of the spring. So these will still fit in and still fit in nice and snug. The poly bushes traditionally don't survive high temperatures and, and humidity all that well. Uh, whereas these are more bushes. Which is definitely are... something I always have to do. Absolutely, with. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Too right. So one thing I'd just like to point out, and I'm not sure if we've touched on this before or not, but with the springs, many people don't realise the only thing that actually pushes your car forward is the actual shackle pin. And I forget about the wheels and everything else. That's what's transmitting all the force. So on your four springs, that's basically moving the whole car. So as you can imagine, your wheels are going along like this. The diff housing is going this way. You know, your springs mounted under here. It's pulling as well. That's all that's moving the car along. So aside from ride quality, um, you know, quality suspension components are quite essential from a safety point of view as well. I mean, you break that, it's not going to be pretty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
We also have a thing called a military wrap. This has been, this is not, our invention's been around for donkeys. Um, and it's basically a safety mechanism. So if um, the, the <clears throat> mainspring leaf breaks, this wrap will catch it. Jess has certainly become good with the hammer lately. And that's a pretty good reason to stay on her good side. Now, while it's possible to install the leaf springs on your own, spring packs are very heavy, and it's much easier and faster with someone helping. It's also one of the jobs that I find easier to do when the vehicle's on the floor, simply because you've got less distance to lift the spring. Well, well that's all done. We can throw the wheels back on now. Yeah, I've, well, I've got a couple of other wheels to put on. Um, okay. they, when I bought it, it had big 35s on it, yeah. but it's too expensive to replace when you always pop them in during mustering. Them anyway. The higher you are, the more you know, likely yeah. you are to roll. So. Well that's the front end done, and now it's straight to the rear to go through the same process all over again. I'm glad there's three of us working, hopefully we'll get it done before sundown. Well, that's that. Time for a can of meal and something to wash it down with, I reckon. Coming up on the next episode. With tools being so limited on the station, we decided to install the e-locker and gearbox at Mount Isa four-wheel drive parts. We wanted to do a road test just to test out the gearbox and that before we pull it out. The common symptoms you'll come across are things like crunching in gears, difficult gear selection, uh, all the bearings we've got, genuine bearings. So that's already all in here, isn't it? Yeah. Come and have a look at this. Oh, yuck. Yeah, what do you reckon that is? Water. Yep. <laughs>